Every school year it happens, especially in college. Kids are sharing confidences, clothes, a burger at a football game, a water glass in the dorm, and then it's on the news, an outbreak of meningitis. It's commonly transmitted between uh, teenagers, college students, young military recruits, and by the fact that they share close quarters when they're living around each other. But what is meningitis and why is it so easily spread? A meningitis is an inflammation of the coverings around the brain and the spinal cord, uh, which can be caused by a virus or a bacteria or other organisms. Teenagers quite often share many bodily fluids, including saliva, tears, sweat, things that can transmit the bacteria, and they are very often sharing towels, uh, other parts of their wardrobe, things like drinking from the same glass, putting your toothbrush in the same cup that another person who has meningitis has their toothbrush in, or kissing is a common way to, to spread it. So if you're around someone who's got the illness, you're at risk. But how do you know you have it? Its symptoms often don't broadcast meningitis. You have a stiff neck, headache, chills because you're mounting a fever, trouble dealing with lights, loud sounds. Some people might ignore the signs as just a bad case of the flu. The stiff neck and increasing fever can flag that meningitis is a possibility. But experts say whenever you experience a bad headache or fever, it should be checked out. A person, when they have a headache, and it's a very, very bad headache, should seek medical attention right away. A person should always call their physician to find out why they're experiencing an abnormal sensation. For health professionals, pinpointing the diagnosis means doing a lumbar puncture. A lumbar puncture, also known as a spinal tap, is a procedure where a very thin needle is placed into the low back and it enters what we call the subdural space. And this is where the bacteria or virus that's causing the meningitis would be. We just take a sample of it and we can send it off to the lab. And based on how the body's immune system is reacting, we can tell if it's more likely a viral meningitis or if it looks to be bacterial meningitis. Discovering the type of meningitis is important since treatments differ. If it's a virus, the body's immune system is going to be the main component to fight that infection. So we have to give supportive care, make sure they have plenty of fluid, good nutrition, and make sure that the patient is able, has a competent immune system to overcome it in the course of 10 to 14 days. In terms of treating a bacterial infection, you need to find out what the organism is the exact species of the organism and what that species is sensitive to in order to direct which antibiotic you're going to be using to help the body to overcome the infection. It's essential to get appropriate care for both types of meningitis. If left untreated, complications can arise. The infection can take over the central nervous system or spread to the brain. Annually, 300 people die from meningitis and the bacterial kind can be the most deadly. The vast majority of people who have a viral meningitis will get over it no problem. It comes and goes in a couple of weeks. But people with bacterial meningitis are at much higher risk for having a fatal outcome. People can die from meningitis if they have an overwhelming infection that takes over their central nervous system and then subsequently their body. There are some vaccines that can prevent some, but not all causes of meningitis. Common sense hygiene can also stop its spread. Washing hands well is one safeguard, as is opting not to share the communal beer mug at a dorm party. There are also medications that can help ward off the disease after an outbreak. Of course, we all live in the real world, and sometimes catching a disease like meningitis can't be helped. But you can help yourself if you think you might have it. People should always remember, when it comes to meningitis, that it can be nothing and it can be everything. So don't neglect a headache and make sure that you've seen a trained professional to help sort out what's going on in your brain.